see all of you here this morning. God has given us the opportunity to come out and to share uh, in this uh, this Valentine's Day celebration. Amen. Amen. And uh, our minds can only uh, go back to when we may have fact first fell in love. How good it felt. Amen. Mm -hmm. Might have got a little rough and rocky over the years, but nevertheless. God been good to us, hasn't he? Yes. And uh, we praise the Lord for that this morning. And uh, I don't believe God is through with us. All expressing our love one for another is not simply relative to uh, intimacy one man shares with a woman or woman with a man, but how we express our feelings towards each other is what Valentine's Day is really all about. Amen. I think uh, Sister Carol exemplified that in her dissertation on uh, the origin of uh, Valentine's Day. It wasn't necessarily in uh, the best interest of Valentine, the originator, to have uh, initiated that movement, but deep in his heart, he knew nothing out without last love. Amen? The Bible said, war should cease. Mountains will stop shaking with the swelling thereof. Then Gosta came along and lifted up that, that magnificent verse in the book of First Corinthians, the 13th chapter, that indicates love lasts as what? Always. And everything else will pass. Look at your neighbor and say, love will still be alive. Amen. So that's what I want to talk about this morning is uh, keeping romance alive. I'm going to ask my family. I'm so happy to see them and others. I should say, y'all, let's all get a little bit closer this morning. Amen. 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 Um, so many people are taking God for granted these days, and uh, I believe it's essential that we, we remind various ones every now and then that uh, that love should never fade. Amen. And uh, we should always be prepared to express our deepest and our heartfelt affection for God. For when we were out, when we were without help, while we were yet sinners, Christ. God for us. Greater love has no man in this that he did what? Lay down his life for his friends. I know people say they love you, but I don't know whether or not they lay down their life for you. Yeah. Amen. Christ thought it not robbery to be to be our, our, our vicarious sacrifice yeah. as he died out there on the cross uh, that you and I might have eternal life through his expression of love. If you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention to the, the book of, uh, book of uh, Revelation, the seventh chapter, I'm going to read verse 4 5 as you're turning there. Thankful to God for giving me the inspiration to have recorded those songs. Brother Rich was our, uh, our producer, what a gift of the talented uh, individual he is. Amen. Um, and it's my goal, my desire. I used to say when I stopped pastoring, I'm going to do it now with the Lord willing. I'm going to go around the country and tell people about the need to love one another. Particularly as it relates to couples. I mean, uh, God is really trying to bring uh, couples back into that kind of bonding. It may very, be, may very well be relevant to the book of Songs of Solomon. How many of y'all have read that book? Mm -hmm. I don't know what y'all miss. That's the most intimate and most uh, passionate book in all the Bible. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you wonder to some, to some extent every now and then why would God allow us to have such an intimacy in print? And that kind of borderline on uh, somebody loving off, not necessarily in the best interest of our so called Christian faith. Oh, love and affection didn't start with the world. Amen. Yeah. How many know love and affection started with who? Started with God. Adam and Eve was naked. Look at you. Look at your name and say, but they were not ashamed. Yeah. But they were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. As sin not uh, befell them, their love would have lasted uh, eternally as God's original creation. 
because, but because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we have, we have missed out on the eternal marvel that they could have been. But nevertheless, Jesus said to Adam, I should bruise the serpent's heel. In other words, I give this life that we might be forever united once again in that, in that bond of romance. What did your name say? I want to be loved. I want to be loved. Funny how you get uh, to a point you get used to used to going without it. And how many of you know you would give up anything for somebody to show you some appreciation, to show you some kindly affection, take their minds off of everything but you every now and then, and look at your neighbor and say, "And make me a priority." <laughs> It's a reminder that I want to be a priority. I want you to come you know, treat me with love and affection. After you've done everything and gone everywhere, and don't spend all your time in church. Uh, but look at your neighbor and say, We need affection. It was a 
blockbuster wasn't. I was doing some research and I discovered that it was 2.18 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Normally a movie grows millions, but this one, and that, nothing has exceeded it since. You have to take Avatar, but that's the same. John writes the church at uh, Ephesus. Very, very, very well, very well depict the church age which we live in. Among the seven, he notes this particular one to the church of Ephesus. And what did God say to them? God says to the church of Ephesus, I have what? Somewhat against thee. Because you have done what? Left first. He says, Remember from whence you have fallen. He says, uh, Repent. Do the first. 
to return. Or else, listen now, or else, he said, if you don't romance me, if you don't romance me, I'll come and I'll move the candlestick. I'll move the anointing out of your life. I tell anybody, if you're going to get married, you, well, don't get married if you don't have the capacity to forgive. Help me preach. I say, you know, when we do all that ritual and process of getting married and having it and all that, that big array of this, that, and the other, long body, body, your suits, you got enough. But if you don't have the capacity to forgive somebody, don't get married. Because it ain't going to last. Paul says in the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 22, he said, and the fruit of the Spirit is what? Among wow. other things, he, he, he denoted his love. In other words, you can't be in a romantic relationship without the Spirit. Somebody help me preach. Yeah. Sister Johnson, whose husband went on to be with the Lord this week. I can understand why, because she had spent 50 years the same in what I believe was a loving relationship. But look at your neighbor and say, you can't love nobody for no 50 years without God. Can't do it. In other words, if we're going to keep love or romance alive, it's predicated upon our relationship with who? Why the Bible said, fail not to assemble yourself together as the man of some people are, because you will not stay in a healthy relationship, whether it's between you and your significant other or, or those of us as being a part of the body of Christ without the help of the Holy Spirit. Did y'all hear me? Because Jesus said, I'm the vine. I'm the, I'm, you, I'm, yes, I'm the vine. You, you are the branches, except you abide in me and my word abide in you. He says, you cannot... Do nothing. You can be erotic. You can have eroticism, eros love. You can have a feel, which is a brotherly love, or love for those persons that you are related to, based upon uh, whether or not they do what makes you happy. But to have an agape love, yeah. Yeah. and that's what Christians ought to have. That's what keeps yeah. people together for fifty years. It's not eroticism because you're gonna get to a point in your life you ain't gonna be able to get it too erotic. And your relationship has to go beyond feel love because the person that you are in a significant relationship with, they're not, they're not your, they are not your blood relation. Y'all help And so, and so John is saying to the church of Ephesus, he said, God has somewhat against you because you have left your first love. And if we expect to have a, 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 a romantic relationship with one another, it's going to be determined by how I feel and how I respond towards God. So, Deborah, can you remember when you first felt the joys of the remission of your sins? Remember how that felt? When God, when God saved us by his by his redemptive work out there on the cross, and we were, you know, we were alive in the spirit. As the book of Ephesians said, we were no longer dead, but we had been quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> we, don't, we don't love God the way we used to love him. And God is saying, if you can't be romantic with me, it's going to be impossible to be romantic with someone else. <coughs> you know, when people didn't have, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have things that could like, you know, like five, they used to, you know, among the Native Americans, they used to rub them two pieces of wood together. If you don't stay in a healthy relationship with God, having a romantic relationship with one another is going to be like what? Rubbing two pieces of wood. Hoping, look at your name say, hoping, hoping. that you can start a fire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but when you
you're in a when you're in a right relationship with God, when you're expressing your heartfelt appreciation for what He has done for you, the fact that He asked that He woke us up this morning, He started us on our way, He clothed us in the right mind, He's making provisions for us, He's keeping back all hurt, harm, and danger, sickness get upon us. God comes up, He heals our bodies. Lord knows what the with the with the cares and responsibilities that we have. If it was not for God, we would lose yeah. our minds. Yeah. And, and, and yet, some people yeah. take God for granted. Yeah. Yeah. Churches are not having, you know, numeric problems because of the facilities or the or the instruments or the or the giftings and this, that, and the other. We are losing, we are losing in terms of the numeric growth of our churches yeah. because people don't love God. Look at your neighbor and say, stop taking the blame. Stop taking the blame. We are, we, are seeing a, we are seeing a falling away of the faith because people are not in a romantic relationship with the Lord. And if you, again, if you don't have God at the center of your life, it will be difficult, if not impossible, to stay in a long-lasting relationship yeah. with one another. Yeah. You got people today get married today, and they are they are they are they are they are falling out of love tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because they don't have the capacity to have a a, a a infinite relationship with someone because they are not walking in a a a a a a a, a spirit of, of of oneness with the Lord. And so John, he writes the church of Ephesus and expresses God's feelings towards them, letting them know that they are out of, look at the name, say they're out of sync. Yeah. They're out of sync. And I thought I would, you know, in, insert this in this message. The reason that we want to be in a romantic relationship with one another, whether it be, you know, as a body of Christ or a man towards his woman, his wife, is because people are not coming to our churches to see a shipwreck. Y'all didn't catch that. We went, as I said earlier, we went back and forth to see the Titanic, not because of the, the ship that sunk in the, in the icy waters, but we went back over and over again because we wanted to see Rose act out her love for Jack, and Jack express his affection for Rose. Am I right? So think about it for a minute. If people are coming to our churches, they want to see some romantic relationships in our pulpits. They want to see romantic, and I'm talking about godly now. They want to see romantic relationships in our pew. People are tired of going to church where they see single women every every, every Sunday. They want to see you in a, they want to see you, and they want to go to a church where they see people in a relationship. Can y'all help me preach? Yeah. Yeah. And if not in an intimate, intimate relationship with a with with a, with a man or woman, they want to see us loving yeah. one another. Yeah. 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 How can Jesus say, how shall they know that you are my disciples except you what? Love one another. I mean, we should be all over this church in the morning hugging one another, expressing our affection for one another. Shouldn't nobody have to tell us to have a congregational fellowship? We should be going all out of our way to let somebody know, I missed you. I'm glad to see you. How you been doing? I really appreciate you. I'm sorry I didn't call you. We, girlfriend, we ought to got together this weekend, went out and had some lunch. We ought to did a little window shopping and nothing. We should have got our fingernails done. Brother, we ought to spend some time watching that game together last week. We ought to been enjoying one another's fellowship. But the church has gotten indifferent. And people are not coming to church to see no shipwreck relationships. I don't care how great a ministry is, you let that husband and wife fall out and, and looking all disgruntled and not affectionate one to another and that people, folk gonna start, they're gonna slip, they might, you know, it might not happen all at once, but they're gonna grab this start slipping out. Because people wanna see romance. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Yeah. People ain't coming to no dead church and look at your neighbor and say, I ain't going to no church that's at the bottom of the ocean. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just speaking. I'm just speaking. I'm speaking. I'm speaking generally now, trying to get us to see that we all have a responsibility when it comes to romance, don't we? Yeah. Look at your neighbor. Say, when the last time you told me that you loved me? When the last time somebody put their arms around me, except for when they wanted something? Jackie, <laughs> feel me. I'm getting some help up here. 
Look at your neighbor and say, romance is important. He said, Solomon wrote a whole book on romance. And look at what happened. That romance came out of a tragedy too. David had said that falling short of the glory of God, he had transgressed God's holy law. He took a man's wife and he had the, had the husband killed. But the Bible said, let me, I'm just going to jump, you know, kind of in and out of the, uh, of the principles of this point. David repented, didn't he? He yeah. said, Lord created within me a clean heart and yeah. do what? Renew, renew a right spirit in me. And out of that out of that tragedy between him and Bathsheba, God gives birth to a young boy or to a son by the name of Solomon. And if all, if all things, God allows Solomon to write this beautiful litany of, of romance. I mean, he gets real. He gets real. He gets real. Uh, he gets real intimate, doesn't he? Talking about the rest. Talking about all this other stuff. Turn your name and say, Pastor, you're going too far, son. <laughs> and I'm trying to get us to see how important it is to love talk. He says, number one, write this down. He says, remember, remember from whence you fall. You can't, you can't rekindle the fire in a relationship with someone if you don't remember how good it used to be. Yeah. This young man went to his counselor and went, I don't know how he could win back, win back the love of his wife. The counselor said, well, tell me how it was when you first met. He said, we did everything together. We spent quality time. We never took each other for granted. She would call me. We'd talk all hours of the night. And we didn't have nothing left to, left to say. We could, we, could, we, could, we could feel what each other were feeling. Anybody remember the years we got taught? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't want to admit it, but but he said, uh, what else? He said, oh, we we would write each other love letters, you know. He, you know write about these poems. I mean, we just had a real. We had, a, as Marvin Gaye said, we had it. We had a we had it going on. <laughs>
people doing for him in the church or, or elsewhere. God is still sitting on the throne yes. saying, if my people yes. who are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and seek my face, turn from the ways of this world, detach, detach yourself from the things of the flesh. The Bible said, be not unequally yoked. Why? Because if you're in a relationship with somebody that don't really love God, if you're not really strong, they'll pull you right yeah, out of, yeah, out of right. God, out, yeah, of, out yeah, of your relationship with God. Yeah. First thing we do when we counsel yeah. couples that want to get married, first thing I ask, have y'all been born again? Because this flickering flame is soon going to pass because you don't have the capacity Number one, as I aforementioned, you don't have the capacity to forgive. So soon as she don't fix your favorite meal, or soon as she comes up a little bit short in the budget, or as soon as the in-law get a little bit between you, y'all going to fall all apart. But how many of you know love suffers long? Yeah, it is kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love does what? Bear of all things. Love, love for the not itself. Love, love, love is, love is, is, is truth. Amen. Amen. Then somebody said, I want to be loved. Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned last week we were going to have this service on romance. This place should have been busted loose. Y'all should have been on Facebook. Y'all should have been on, you know, y'all should have been, you know, emailing. Y'all should have been calling for you should have, matter of fact, y'all should have went around and knocked on some doors and said, you've got to come to our church. So this is going to talk about how to keep romance alive. But somebody may have had the impression he was just going to talk about our natural affections, our natural romance. But turn your name said it's deeper than that. I want to get so close to God, because the closer I get to God, the closer I get to my wife. The closer I get to God, the closer I get to this church. The closer I get to God, the closer I get to, you know, my family. If I, if I, if I, if I, as Paul foreseen, he said, but if I lose sight of the heavenly vision, if I stop being affectionate towards God, uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to fall out of love with my wife. I'm going to give up on my family. I'm going to take the church right casually. But how many of you know that when you got, when you got a romance going with God, he that's begun a good work in you. He's a to complete. Yeah, yeah. I've known people that get separated or divorced and then later go back and do what? Remarry. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Because they, de they developed a capacity that they didn't have before, preferably because they didn't know or have a relationship with God. Look at your name and say, you can't blame people for falling out of love with you. Yeah. And they can't blame you for falling out of love with them. Yeah. Particularly if they're not pursuing, if they're not in a passionate, if they're not in a, a lasting relationship with God. Mm. Anybody here have problems in communication? In your relationship? We would still be in love, and I just don't know what to talk about. <laughs> Person come home, you know, I want to I want to say something. <laughs> She's walking around. He pays it. I want to talk to her. Because how many of you can't be in an affectionate relationship without communication? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Men, women don't want no man all over them and they talk to them all day. Help me preach. Can I be, can I be, can I be honest? Well, the problem of communication is, again, our relationship with God. Because when you get in a relationship with God, God teaches those things. He said, I'm sending you the Holy Ghost and he shall teach you all. He didn't say he's just going to teach you the Bible. He's going to teach you how to have a communication with that significant what? Other. What I've discovered, this is just me and y'all may, y'all may, y'all may argue the point. I've discovered in communication, my wife can attest to this, it ain't always got to be profound. That's right. <laughs> This is never when you're not, uh, um, when they'll get there. It ain't always got to be deep. <laughs> I would talk to my significant other, but I ain't, I ain't got no, I don't have the latest, I don't have the, the I don't have the latest news. I, 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 don't know, I don't know nothing deep to talk about. You, God will teach you that it just takes the little things. Yeah, yeah. Honey, how was your day? Yeah, yeah. Can I help you with something? 
what I did for you. I, you know, I went around the house, cleaned up the other day. My wife came up and said, Baby, what I did. I said, wow. Every time a woman just wants you to do it, just do the little stuff. You know, and that's what you that's what you talk about. It ain't always got to be something heavy and something profound. I used to struggle with that. I used to go on, I used to Google when I say Google, tell me what to tell my wife talk about. I used to come home. I'm looking for some good, I'm looking for some deep stuff. I'm looking for some heavy stuff. Because I know Katie, Katie, Katie deep. Y'all, y'all look at she got a shot right here, but you know, you know, you can't you gotta do a lot to impress Katie. But um, <laughs> But I said, you know, I can't find nothing. I can't find it. And the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said, she loves you enough just to hear you talk about the book of the Bible. Yeah. Tell her that you, you text tell her. Tell her that, you know, what you did when you was, you know, at Rex and Fox. Talk about, you know, some of the things you plan to do around here. Tell her that, matter of fact, the other night, you know, we signed up with uh, Baltimore City Public Television. We're going to be coming on at least twice a month, start next month. Talk about that. Nothing profound. Tell her that you, you know, the board, we had a board meeting, tell a conference. It went great. That gives us minutes afterwards. We can go back and visit and make sure we stay on top of these things. We ain't about to give up on our church. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, I go back to that scripture. He says, but if you don't love me, if you don't romance me, he said, I'll come and check this out because it took me, took me a while to understand with Revelations 2, 4, 5, was trying to say, but what God was saying, if you don't romance me, I'm going to take the ministers out your church. Y'all can't imagine that, can He said, I'll come and I'll move the anointing. He said, and you will have a, you will experience a famine of the word of God. Oh, but God, Pastor, I'm not worried about that. We got televangelists. We got, you know, you can cut that on and never really get a ring of word. It might be a blessing to somebody else. But if you don't show affection for God, affection for God, he will allow a famine of the word of God. That's why some people say, I listen to these preachers, but I don't, I don't, I don't get nothing out of it. The reason you don't get nothing out of it, because you ain't in a romantic relationship with God. And so what God has done, he's not shut the church down as a whole, but he's taken the candlestick out of your life. You could hear a preacher preach from now to midnight tonight and not feel or get nothing out of it. And so what you do, you get frustrated. You, people go out, they say the church, you know, is irrelevant. They ain't got no power. Pastor, he ain't hip enough. You know, all kind of uh, 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 superficial stuff. When it all, what it all boils down to is that you are no longer pursuing after God. I remember the praise when they came along and they sang that song look back in the 60s and it was entitled what? Stop? <laughs> and that's what God is telling us to do. If you're God away from him, he said do what? Stop. stop. In the what? In the Don't stop in the name of your church. Don't be arrested by who your bishop or your pastor is. Don't, don't be caught up with religion because your pastor rides a Bentley or a Rolls Royce. No, that's not what it's all about. It's about how do I feel about the one who gave his life. And, and incidentally, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, he said, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. Whether I go, you know the way you know. And Thomas said, Lord, we know not whether I go or not. Can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. That's right. I'm the way, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the what? I'm the truth. Yeah. And I'm the life. And God must love us because who else would give you a mansion if they didn't love you? Yeah. I mean, we can't imagine what God has in store for those who do what? Love him. But John says again, he says, remember. Y'all got that point? He says, remember. And then he says, um, he says, repent. You know? In other words, stop doing what you're doing. Some of us know we're not romancing God the way we should, but we just keep on doing it. Has to give a benediction. We don't think no more about church or think no more about religion as pertain to your, your commitment or to your obligation to your local church until this time, what? Next week. And you say you love God. Yeah. I love God. What's her name? Kim? You don't love God? I love God. You know, that's why, you know why that song is a big hit? Because people have fallen out of love with God and they're under conviction. Why do you think Anthony Brown's song has so much anointing, so much power? 
been on, I think it's been the top song for the last, what, month, two, three months? Why? It's the message. It's not the beat. He's saying that he loved me. He, what, what, how he go? He, you know, he loved me so much to say what, is, what God is saying, what God is doing, he's trying to get us to see that if we have gone astray, if we like the prodigal son have gone off to a far country and we no longer love the one who cares the most about us, which in this case or his case was his father, he says, turn around. Yeah. How many left? Let me ask the question, church, how many, how many, how many of us uh, have repented of anything lately? How many, of us gone, how many of us have gone to God and said, God, I'm so I'm sorry that, you know, I haven't been praying lately. I'm sorry that I haven't been trusting you for my financial stability. I'm sorry that I haven't been loving my wife right. I'm sorry that I haven't been loving my husband right. I'm sorry that I haven't been taking time out, time out with my kids. I'm sorry that I don't participate or belong to anything in the church. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. We want God to, to, you know, we want God to inspire us, to make us dance on Sunday, and make us feel good. But God said, all of that don't mean nothing if you don't love me. I'm having a good time this morning. I'm not having, I'm not, I don't have anything, I don't have anything against the shout and the dance and the drums and the music and all this other good stuff. But if I don't really love God, what good is it? It's like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal because God is going to move his presence. Anybody here want to prosper, even as your soul prosper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God said, all you got to do is love me. Yeah. That's all you got to do is love me. Oh, yeah. How many men, how many men or how many women for that matter shower their, their significant other with gifts when they know that person don't love them? Mm. I don't know how many of y'all can go back this far, but I was listening to a song by Nancy Wilson. Oh, I think the name of it was, I saw you today. Y'all heard you heard that? Yes. Does it hear that? Yes. Oh, I, I can't go. Oh, I can't go. <laughs> Nancy went, went and did a little shopping and she stopped at this French cafe. And when she looked over, she seen her husband, uh, a significant other in a romantic relationship, sitting at a table with what? She sings about it. Oh, that song, that must have been real because she sings that with so much passion and power. I saw you today. And what God is saying to us, he said, I saw you today. You wasn't love. You wasn't thinking about me. You kissed me in church. You lift up holy hands. You gave, you, 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 you said that you, you gave the, 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 the invocation. You read the scripture. You preached Sunday. But look at your neighbor and say, well, God saw you today. See, that, that's, see, that's the thing. You can fool some folks some of the time, but you can't fool God. Yeah. None of the time. Yeah. See, this, this ain't a message for the weak and the hard. This ain't, this ain't a message for those of us who don't want to get any closer to God. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, God can give you back the years that the locust has eaten up. In other words, as you get old, your body starts changing. But God said, no, nah, buddy, if you keep loving me, I'll give you back everything you had when you were in your youth. Look at somebody say, can you do that? Yes. 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 How you know? He did it for Abraham and Sarah. Yes. They were up in their hundreds of years of age, but here they go, bearing a child. He did it for Zechariah and Elizabeth. Don't tell me God can't give you your romantic uh, passions for one another because you're growing up and they, that don't count with God. That's how what's impossible with man. Look at your name said. It's possible with God. And I thank God for that because I love loving. God forbid anything ever happened to my wife, but I love being in love. My wife, something God seen fit, something happened, guess what? I'll be. Oh, I love you. Because I just love, just love, love. Uh, look at me, like he's, he's, a, he's a hopeless romantic. He's just love and love. Yeah, maybe that's my name. My sister's probably going to attest to that. I just, I'm just a romantic fool. Amen. I sit and watch romantic comedies all day long. I look at some serious one. I looked at Rock, Robert Streisand last week. I mean, she was in love. Because it's something about passion and romance that does something to the human spirit. Oh, yes. 
You get tired of routine. You get tired yeah, of yeah. pulling on this. You get tired of struggling here. You get tired of this. You get tired of getting behind the bill. You get tired of a whole lot of, uh, 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 you know, tradition. Every now and then you just want to steal away. That's right. And just have a little what? Yeah, that's too. <laughs> Sometimes I just want a little romance. I ain't going to read it today, but I wrote a poem in my book about a romantic paradise page. I think it's page 80. Y'all got to read that uh, when you get a chance. And it's all about me and my wife just getting away. Well, if I didn't love God, I wouldn't be thinking about that. Because look at your neighbor and say, you know how much temptation passed through your life on the course of a week? You know how much temptation passes through your life on the course of a week? If you wasn't in a healthy relationship with God, look at you. Look at your neighbor and say, I reach for it. What do you think kept uh, Eve from staying with Adam? She wandered off, and when the enemy started telling her how she could have, you know, all this knowledge, if she eat the tree of knowledge, really, what did Eve do? Eve was bored. And so what did Eve do? Had she stayed in a relationship with God, the Bible said, Lord came down and said, where are thou? They hid themselves. They put fig leaves on because... They had transgressed. But look at your neighbor and say, when we fall out of love with God, all we got to do is repent. And I'm telling you, you can't build no, you can't build God's kingdom on some good church for an hour, hour and a half on Sunday. It's going to take a commitment. I'm glad God is getting to a point in, 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 in Christendom where he's not going to let you get by with a little dab or do and put on this parade on Sunday and do this, that, and the other. God said to you, he says you will love one and, and hate the other, or hate one and do what? Look at your neighbor and say, I love God. I love God. I love him. You don't love him? I love God. I love God. I told my wife I was out here last night, and I'm closing. Hope y'all don't get it. I'm just sharing what's on my heart. Amen. You know some churches you go to and preachers love God so much they talk to you for two hours. And there you walk out. There you get upset. There you get disgruntled. There you get, uh, you know, uncomfortable. Turn your neighbor and say, you got to love God to want to, want to receive from him. Amen. Amen. You got to love him. You can't just, you know, this, the church has turned into a fast food. You know, you just run and grab something. And run right back out. It's not a fast food. God gives us an entree. Amen. The Bible says, study yourself. Study to show thyself a fruit. Work with the need of not to be ashamed. Right to divide the word of truth. Do you know how much time it takes to prepare a word from God? I listened to these preachers and pastors last week. Another. It takes time to dig in that word. And so when you come out to, 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 to serve it to the people of God, y'all should be open and, 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 and filled with expect, expectation because what God said is going to do what? Come to pass. Standing on the promises of what? Christ my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and what? Sing. I'm doing what? I'm standing, not on what the world has to say, because two out of every three marriages are ending in divorce. You know they did a study with one of our universities around the country as to what's keeping relationships uh, together longer, and they've discovered that those who worship God, are staying together much longer than those who are not. Why? Because God gives us the capacity. Turn your neighbor and say, I can't love without God. Yeah. It's impossible. If a person starts getting away from God, you can almost be assured it won't be long. If, if you're in a relationship with somebody, it won't be long before the relationship starts to deteriorate. Why? Because the person does not maintain the value or the or the or the or the or the, or the, the capacity to love in and through their own flesh. He said, my Paul said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the bonds of what? This flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't love without the spirit. Because when you get outside the will of God, he's going to call you to a place of repentance. He's going to say, remember what? The first works. And that leads me to my last point. Turn your neighbor and say, we got to return. I don't know where we are in our relationship with one another. I don't know where you are in your relationship with your significant other. But if you are not experiencing a romance, if you're not experiencing romance with God, I want you to stay on your feet this morning. Stay on your feet. Or just everybody. For that everybody. I know somebody said, no, I'll ask you, you know, if you preach in the choir, I'm in a relationship. I'm, I'm in a close relationship with God. But you know what? 
all of us can afford to get a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody that close to God, they can't get a little bit closer. Yeah. David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. This poor man cried, the Lord heard him. Oh, taste and do what? See that the Lord is what? How many want a long lasting relationship? This is a season for romance, amen? Amen. Because listen to this, where sin abound, grace abound more so. The God ain't gonna never let this world get as bad as sin is trying to make it. That's what you call uncommon grace. Amen. Somebody said, oh, there's so much sin in this world, there's so much infidelity, there's so much, you know, there's so much inordinate affection, there's so much of this going on. God's getting ready to just, you know, do this country, do this world, and he decides to make a moral. I beg the difference. He says, with sin abound, he said, my grace would do what? Abound more so. So look at your neighbor and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. God is about to blow your mind. What you thought was get ready to come to an end, God said, y'all just getting started. Do I have a witness in here? Look at your neighbor and say, don't fight the field. Anybody here that's in a relationship with somebody can attest to the fact that they love them now more than they used to, more than they loved them when they first met. Anybody here feel like that? I got any witnesses in the you love Curtis more than the other one? Oh boy, I feel good in here. It was a little chilly when we first came, it was getting hot in here now. <laughs>
to keep this thing alive. Because as I close, I go back to what I said this week. People are not coming to churches to watch a ship wreck. They're coming to see romance. They're coming to see us pulling together, yeah, even yeah. though it looks like our ship might be sinking. Mm -hmm. But since Bernie, you got me, I, you know, what, what, what did uh, Sonny and Cher say? I got you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. They were in that thing through thick and what? Yeah. Thick and thin. See, the church is not exemplifying the real love of God because in the midst of your greatest trial, we ought to be getting closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Some people say, no, nah, I can't hang with y'all. Y'all, you know, the ship, this ship is sinking. Y'all ain't got food. Y'all ain't got this. Y'all ain't got, I, I, I'm sorry, Pastor. You know, you know, you've done a lot, y'all, y'all. But the ship, you know. But when you really love someone, you stick in there with them. Yeah, that's yeah. Because I heard you, Catherine, when you said, God's going to bless us. Yeah. Now your neighbor said, I want, when people come here, I want them to see my romance. Yeah. I want them to see me caring for folk. I want them to, I want to greet them at the door. Pastor and I, I don't know, know, know y'all probably do some of we be on the phone call, we be calling up numbers and praying for them. I said, Pastor, we should go in the order one night, just be praying for one of my numbers. I said, baby, I want you to pray for me. Because I felt like, boy, if anybody get a prayer for Pastor and I You know what that is? That's romance. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Romance is not always laying next to somebody in the bed. Because if you don't love God, you know what's going to ultimately happen in that, in that relationship? That person who's going to be in God forbid, you got a king side bed, that person going to be as far to the right thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> the two of you can get you all the space in the middle. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, when I love God, he's going to bring me closer. I mean, some of these things are made to laugh, but they're true, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm, I'm right in your business. Somebody said, "Pastor, pastor, right up, be all in my business." You know why I'm in your business? Because I don't want to see you living your life alone. I want to see you in a romantic relationship. If not with your significant other, I want you to get so close to God that you're not missing nothing in the natural. Amen. 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 Can y'all come up here this morning? I want y'all just to let me lay my hands on you. Thank God. 